not put one up for a little while. Um, not really been up to too much really, you know, working and all this. Uh, the missus hasn't been very well, so she's been off work. So uh, we haven't really done much, you know. But uh, anyway, it's Sunday today, so a job that I've been kind of been putting off, but is overdue really, and that's to uh, service the automatic transmission on the on the Volvo here. Um, quite a tricky little job. Not quite as easy as uh, changing the oil on, on a sort of manual gearbox, which you know I've done plenty of times um, on a manual gearbox. If you imagine that that uh, brake fluid reservoir there is the gearbox, but on a manual gearbox it's really easy. You just generally drop the uh, sump plug, drain out all of the old gear oil, and then normally you'll find there's a filler plug, sort of around about halfway up the side of the casing, and you just take the filler plug out, drop, put the uh, sump plug back in, and then you pump in gear oil. They normally come in sort of containers with like a plastic tube, and you sort of pump it in until it flows out the uh, the filler hole and then that's your level um, automatic transmissions are a lot more complicated than that they, they work under a pressurized system and uh, there's also a torque converter which uh, retains fluid so when you drain the fluid you only ever get about half of the amount of fluid out I'll show you some diagrams here and uh, try and explain and it a little bit an better exploded view of a typical inline rear wheel drive automatic transmission. As you can see it's quite complicated with sort of gear cog gears and bands and cogs and even felt and sometimes paper actually in the box. And the whole system relies on a very very thin oil which is pressurized. So in this exploded diagram if you look to the front of the gearbox you'll see that kind of large donut shaped thing. Well that's your torque converter and inside that is a kind of impeller system which pressurizes the fluid. But when the gearbox is stationary the fluid remains inside the torque converter so when you just sort of drop the sump plug you don't get all of the fluid out in fact you only get around about 60 percent so this means that you need to do multiple drops to change most of the fluid as my car is front wheel drive the gearbox is even more complicated even more compact but the theory is still the same it still has the torque converter which retains the fluid now normally if you're going to do a fluid change service then well then you just drop the sump of the gearbox and also change the uh, oil filter as well but unfortunately the Volvo doesn't have an easily serviceable oil filter it's almost like little tea strainers throughout the system so that isn't viable in this case now of course if you took it to the garage well they're not going to flush your oil three times so they'll just connect it up to an oil flush machine and it'll pressurize your gearbox and flush through the old fluid out with new fluid yeah and this is a very quick system but there is a risk when you do this and it's something called fluid shock that can affect the internals of an older gearbox in an older car like mine. So this is not a system that really is recommended for older cars. I'll explain a bit about that later. So there you go. So you understand a little bit more what I'm talking about now. Now the, um, the method to service the automatic transmission in this uh, C70 is to drain out of the fluid. Um, I should probably get about around about sort of three and a half liters out hopefully um, as you can see I've put the car up on ramps to slightly tip it over so I can get that little bit more out so you drain out the old fluid you then put the uh, sump plug back into the gearbox and then you refill the gearbox via the dipstick hole <laughs> that sounds quite easy but everything on this car, well most things are okay but this thing is quite complicated because I tell you what, I can't even point out the dipstick hole if you look down there I don't know if you can see it it's way down there buried, you can see I've put a little bit of silver tape there on the pipes, I've already ripped my hand to pieces trying to get down there but it's, oh my word, it's so so tight it's so that's going to be the first challenge is trying to uh, get the oil or the fluid, the high transmission fluid all the way back into there. <laughs> I've, I've, I've actually devised a little funnel on a little tube so uh, so yeah it's a um, it's a tricky job um, the main thing is you you shouldn't really overfill the transmission system because it's uh, pressurized and I've just pulled the little dipstick off here and unfortunately, prior to me by, uh, getting the car, the transmission has already been slightly overfilled, which is uh, a little bit worrying, to be honest. Um, mainly because 
the card had a new radiator fitted and integral inside the radiator is an oil cooler for the transmission which it's not a preferred system. I don't like that system particularly honest. I mean, um, they all do it. Um, Mercedes had the same system with their uh, CLK series cars and it caused nothing but trouble because as the cars get older and the heater core inside the radiators, you know, corrode and if they start to leak, then the two fluids can actually mix. So you end up with a sort of coolant being pumped around your uh, automatic transmission and that kills the transmission pretty quickly and you're looking at a huge bill there so not always that keen on that system um, this say so this radiator I've got an invoice for this radiator this radiator was changed so only would have had to tra uh, disconnected the transmission caller lines and have slightly overfilled it when they've so it's a good thing that I'm sort of changing this and I can get it to the uh, to the correct level again because it's not good to have it running around with slightly too much fluid so uh, that's what we're doing today we've got the three gallon of transmission fluid here um, what I should do what I'm doing today I'm going to do two changes today I'm going to drop the old fluid refill it run the car flush it around drop that fluid again and then refill it and then this time get the correct level and then I'll run the car um, possibly I reckon so sort of maybe about a month from the sort of driving that I'm doing probably I don't know not many probably it's probably about two two hundred and fifty about two hundred and fifty miles and then I'll do the final the final fluid change now the reason I'm doing that is there's something called fluid shock that um, if you took this car to uh, your local dealer and bearing in mind you would be ripped off quite severely because <laughs> the fluid alone um, just three gallon of fluid uh, I got I managed to get that at a discount I got that for uh, 70 70 pounds but it generally goes for about 90 pounds so it's quite expensive on the fluid so if you go to a dealer what they do is is they um, connect the click the uh, car up to a machine so then they pump out of the the old fluid and pump in the the new fluid but of course in the uh, gearbox itself you've got a lot of uh, switches a lot of servos steel bands uh, even felt pads actually in the servo itself uh, in, in the gearbox itself and by pushing in brand new fluid which is slightly different sort of viscosity and everything else you can get something called fluid shock which uh, sometimes can dislodge sort of gunge and muck inside the sort of gearbox and block up some of the oil ways and uh, it can be quite destructive to the gearbox so they do recommend as the car gets older to do the sort of more gentle gradual drop and flush drop and flush fluid change where over sort of three flushes you sort of generally get to change about 90 percent of the fluid you you still but it's a more well caring kind of easy process on on the actual gearbox so you should avoid fluid shock so uh, that's the plan that's the plan anyway so I'm sort of all pretty much all set to go really I've got two measuring jugs here so I can put back exactly the uh, right amount of fluid but I might do it slightly less because it seems to be slightly overfilled so it's a clean and a used jug I've got the old oil pan there cleaned it all out ready to go so uh, first thing I thought the car's been slightly warmed just to get the fluid sort of like the right sort of thinness so the first next thing now is jump underneath and uh, drop out the old fluid so there you go that's the last of the fluid coming out <laughs> it sounds a bit wrong doesn't it I just try not to listen to it <laughs> so when you get the sump plug out what is quite interesting is the sump plug has a uh, magnet like most of them do on the end of there it's always um, a good chance to have a look at to see if there's any sign of any metal shavings or any swarf or any oddities running around in your gearbox and uh, this one doesn't seem too bad to be honest there's a little bit of muck on the end of the sump plug there but considering the car's done 55,000 miles that's not too bad doesn't look anything too serious was a good idea to replace the aluminium crush washer when you would change the oil in the gearbox or even your actual engine oil so uh, it's pretty standard this one looks like about 20 mil so when I do the final drop which will be after the sort of um, 
months of one month of driving I'll, I'll actually will put on a new crush washer but for now I'll put the old one back on because obviously I'll be changing the fluid twice again so here's the old fluid out and the first thing you do with uh, automatic trans transmission fluid is you sniff it <laughs> and that sounds a bit weird why well what you're sniffing for is you don't want to smell any burning or any sort of like burnt dark sort of smell to the fluid um, that can sort of mean there's quite a bit of wear inside the gearbox that actually smells quite fine it just smells like a well not oil really and then we just do a little dip test and uh, as you can see it's rather dark and the new fluid will be red in colour so yeah it's not too bad um, but I think that fluid is uh, well due for a change so next thing now it's just to very carefully measure what I've drained out and then uh, ideally put exactly the same amount back but as I think this car was slightly overfilled I am going to sort of step back a little bit on the refill and it's better to be under than over with an ATM so uh, I'm going to uh, sort of slightly back step it a little bit and then just sort of top it up at the end once we've uh, completely run the car and run it through all the gears and made sure that everything's uh, been circulated so there we go that's one litre yeah, slightly dark so that now goes into the waste and then we just need to carefully just write down, make a note so how much of a draining out. tube system that I knocked up because that dipstick hole is so buried in the actual innards of the engine there was no way I could just use the funnel itself. So we're now ready to start refilling with the new ATM fluid and this is what the clean fluid looks like. Um, quite a nice dark red, almost like sort of a cherryade colour. So as you can tell compared to that there is quite a lot of darkening in the fluid. It smells about the same though as what came out. So uh, yeah, we just got to shove back just over through about three and a half litres and then uh, start the transmission and flush that round. So it's the fluid going back in. It's a bit of a slow process to be honest. A little bit frustrating I guess. But uh, it's slow but sure. That does take a little while. We don't want to overfill it because if it floods back, it's going to make a sort of real mess. So it's just a question of uh, being a little bit patient, I think. So that's the first drop complete. What I need to do now is just got to run the car, get it warm, um, run the gearbox through the gears, and uh, then do the second drop, which will get out the uh, bit more of the fluid. And then uh, that'll be it for today. And then the third drop, well, that'll be done after, say, so I've done a sort of uh, about 200 miles in the car that'll be the sort of final drop so here's the uh, second drop pretty messy again but um, I think it's a slightly lighter colour looks like gravy doesn't it smells slightly uh, slightly better so obviously the uh, that's probably a, mixed in with the other half of the transmission fluid All that's got to go down to the recycling centre when I get a chance. So, uh, strange smell. It always reminds me of when I used to do uh, engineering at school. When you used to run the laves and they had like a, a sort of a total waste oil feed system that used to run down onto the, uh, sort of around the chuck area when you was turning something. You had that oil. It smells like that very, uh, very sort of same smell. So okay, so it's a second drop, so I've got to go through the uh, very long drawn out refilling process now with the funnel and uh, put back the second lot of new fluid, then we do that long run and then obviously the final drop which I want to include on this video. I'll tell you what, refilling this tranny is just like trying to watch paint dry. <laughs> anyway, I've got one more to go which I'm, uh, I'm not going to bore, with, bore you with that any longer. So uh, yeah, just this little video. Just to sort of show you what I've been, you know, getting up to, and uh, it's quite a nice day out there actually. It's a little bit uh, overcast today on Sunday, cooled down a little bit, but I hope everyone's been enjoying the nice weather. I certainly, uh, certainly have been uh, picking up a little bit of 
suntan there walking about outside in the uh, nice fresh sunny air so anyway there we go just a little uh, pretty boring really wasn't it a little thread video you know but uh, I'll sling this one up anyway and uh, into, I might take it down after a while it's pretty boring but it uh, just sort of shows you I'm still alive still kicking around <laughs> so I'm still causing trouble anyway as always thanks for watching this hope you weren't too bored and then uh, I'll catch you up with the next one I've got a little project coming up um, I'm doing a little radio project at the moment it's taking a little bit longer than I thought because I've had to send off for a couple of little fit fittings and uh, electrical components that I thought I had but you know you know when you can't find things so that's taking a little longer to uh, but I will get that one up at some point not going to be this week though um, you have to bear with me on that one anyway as always thanks for watching take care and I'll catch you all later Bye-bye now.